Now this is the typical cervical vertebrae. The typical cervical vertebrae, they are from C3 to C6 vertebrae. They can be identified by having a body. This body is small and transversely oval. The upper surface bears the raised lips. These raised lips are known as the uncle processes. These are at the sides and these are raised. And the lower surface is counterpart. Here, don't, here we don't have any raised lips. So this can be identified by, uh, by these processes. This is the superior surface of the body and this is the inferior surface. And then the bodies of the adjacent vertebrae, they are connected by the secondary cartilaginous joints of intervertebral disc with ne nucleus pulposus in the center and the annulus fibrosus at the periphery. So there is a pair of joint which is known as synovial uncovertebral joint between the adjacent vertebrae on each side. So these joints are known as synovial uncovertebral joints or joints of Lushka. The anterior surface and the posterior surfaces of the body they are connected to one another and they are covered by anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments. Then we have the vertebral foramen. This is large as we can see and triangular for accommodation for the cervical enlargement of the spinal cord. Then we have the pedicle. Each pedicle arises from the posterior lateral part of the body midway between the upper and the lower margins and diverges backwards. Therefore, we uh, don't have a difference between the superior vertebral notch and the inferior vertebral notch because the pedicle is arising from the midway from the body. So there is not much difference between these two notches. Then the lamine, these are the lamine, these are thin and they are directed backward and medially and meet in the midline to form the spine. The lamine are connected with each other through the ligamentum pleva. So this ligamentum pleva attaches on the upper and the lower margins of the lamine. Then we have the spinous process. This spinous process is biped, short and it is somewhat directed downwards. This gives attachment to ligamentum nuchae and a number of extensor muscles of the back of neck. Then we have the articular processes. This one is the superior articular process, other is the inferior articular process. The superior articular process is directed backwards and upwards while the inferior articular process it is directed downwards and forwards. Then we have the transverse processes. These transverse processes, they are directed laterally and forwards. Each transverse process is pierced by a foramen, which is known as foramen transversarium. Then it presents the anterior root. This is the anterior root. This is the anterior tubercle. This is the costo transverse bar, posterior tubercle, and this is the posterior root. The anterior root, anterior tubercle, costotransverse transverse bar and the posterior tubercle, they represent the costal element and hence the anterior root is attached to the side of the vertebral body in front of the vertebral notch and the posterior root, this represents the true transverse element and is attached to the junction of lamine and the pedicle over here. This is the posterior root. The anterior tubercle of the C6 vertebrae is very much prominent and is known as carotid tubercle because the common carotid artery can be compressed against it. The anterior tubercle, this gives attachment to three sets of muscles like longus coli, longus capitis and scalenus anterior. While the posterior tubercle it provides attachment to a number of muscles out of which you must know about the scalenus medius, scalenus posterior and levator scapulae.
these are the important muscles which are arising from the posterior root i repeat scalenus medius scalenus posterior and levator scapulae are arising from the posterior tubercle then the foramen transversarium of typical cervical vertebrae this is giving passage for the second part of vertebral artery surrounded by the plexus of sympathetic nerves and vertebral veins this root upper surface of the costo transverse bar here we can see this lodges the ventral ramus of the corresponding cervical nerve you must know about the relationship of the cervical nerves with the cervical vertebrae the first cervical vertebrae has the relation with first cervical nerve the first cervical nerve emerges between the skull and the atlas each cervical nerve except the eighth passes above the corresponding cervical vertebrae while the eighth nerve emerges above the first thoracic vertebrae in a typical cervical vertebrae the ventral ramus of each cervical nerve passes along the upper surface of the costo transverse bar behind the second part of vertebral artery in the foramen transversarium whereas the dorsal ramus winds backward around the concave lateral surface of the articular pillar so this is all about the typical cervical vertebrae thank you so much